me to the uh, Bibles to book of Colossians. We'll take a few moments to discuss something which is important for us to know. Change for the better. Change for the better. That's what I want to talk about, a glorious change for the better. What God has done in our lives and um, what he brings about in our lives, something that is very important. Colossians chapter 1 and uh, verse 12 to 14, 12 to 14, turn to your Bibles, <clears throat> if it's out there, it's on the screen. Giving thanks unto God, unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Praise the Lord. Wonderful way Paul has described under the anointing of the Holy Spirit the change that took place in our lives. And uh, this is what I want to talk about, the change for the better. Father, thank you. Thank you that through Jesus Christ, Great things happen through Jesus Christ. We find that there is a change in our standing uh, as far as our life is concerned upon this world. And it all happens because of what Jesus did for us. And help us today to review this and realize it and apply it to our personal lives and to appreciate what Jesus has done for us. And it's only because of his doing that we are what we are today. Help us, Lord, to understand this better in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, this morning, just briefly, I want to talk about this change uh, that is taking place. But, you know, some people, they fear change. They don't want to change. And um, they rather stick to it in one way and stay on it. No changes, nothing at all that happens in their life. But, you know, there's uh, two sides of change. You might say that is the negative side. You might think about like uh, <clears throat> death. Nobody wants to have that kind of change in your life, whether in your personal life or in a family life, to die. Some people, they're afraid of getting old, and they do all kinds of things to, to do it so they don't look old. They don't want to grow another year. Don't, don't tell them that they are one year older today. They're afraid of that. They're aging is the situation. Illness is another thing that we don't want to uh, be partake, partake of. Illness brings about changes in our life status. And uh, so many times we feel that, oh, no, I shouldn't get sick. Otherwise, it will be difficult for me. So things are like that. But you see, that is the other side, the positive side of change. And the uh, positive side of change will be life-changing things like getting married. You know, you get married, there's a big change. Some of these young boys need to get married very quickly. They're waiting the life-changing status in their lives, you know. Uh, birth of a child in the family. When a boy, baby is born in the family, there is a big change. The um, parents change and uh, the whole family changes because of the birth of a child in them. Uh, some people, they go ahead and buy a new home. And that's a change in status. Uh, you, you manage to buy a home. So that's a change in life. These are positive things. These are good things that happen in our life. There are people who uh, get a new job or uh, they maintain a job for a long time. That's a change in life because you've got this. And um, we find that all these changes, there are many more. They are positive changes. They are benefiting us. It's good for us. And uh, we like to have this kind of change. But Paul is talking here about something else. He's talking about changes in our life. And uh, he, he mentioned some, some things over here. Uh, that is very positive, and it's more than just positive, more than just good things, the changing, something that is for everlasting. So Paul is talking about this. Um, so let's, we'll, we'll just look through some of these changes that Paul is mentioning to give us an idea of what he has done for us. Now, I want us to know that, you know, when we were born, when we came into this world, uh, we were not like what it is today. There's some things that were not there. We were different. <clears throat> we were unprepared, actually, for this world. And when we came into this world, we were anything but qualified to live upon this earth 
or to qualify to participate in anything uh, that God has given to us or that is related to God the Father. We were not qualified to participate in that. For instance, when the scripture teaches that when we were, before, before coming to Christ, we were dead in sin. We know that we were dead in sin. We were living a sinful life. And the scripture says that you were dead. That means spiritually dead. Uh, that's, that's not the type of life that God chose for us. So we were spiritually dead because of sin. Then the other thing is because of that, we were separated. Separated from God by our sin. We all know that it is sin that separates us from God. We cannot have good relationship with God because of sin. And this is a problem that every single person faces upon this earth. They want to have relationship with God, but sin comes in between. And because of that, they cannot have a relationship with God. So they are separated by sin. Then the other thing we must remember is that we are children of the devil. We were children of devil, rather. Not we are, we were, because we did not know Jesus Christ. And uh, we were serving the devil and all what he uh, produced, uh, evil things. Devil has control over it, so we were under the power of devil. We were children of the devil. We did things that uh, when you can look back now and say, man, I, I shouldn't have been doing that. How come I was doing that? But because you're doing that, because you're under the control of Satan. Even today, there are people around about us. We were doomed to hell. <coughs> this is all from the scriptures. It tells us that before that, we were all doomed to hell because we were under the uh, jurisdiction of the devil. He was leading us. He was guiding us. He was directing us. We were separated from God. We were separated uh, because of sin. We were dead in sin, and we were children of the devil. So we find that there is no way we could have had any relationship with God. This, of course, is a very sad state affairs, a very sad state of affairs, to be in that position, to be dead in sin, to be separated from God, to be called the children of the devil, or knowing that you have no hope, but you are on your way to hell. This is very sad. But Paul tells us, thanks be to God. Paul says that in verse 12. What does he say? He says, he thanks God, the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So he thanks God. And this is where we come into the picture. We thank God because of what God has done. We thank God of the new birth, that we were born again. Um, everything that was wrong with us, all the evil things, all the bad habits, everything that was wrong with us, has been made right by the Lord. The day we got that experience of being born again, everything was made right. Everything that was wrong before that, but the day we accepted Jesus Christ, he made everything right in our lives. Such as what? Well, let's look at some of this. Before that, we were dead. We were dead to sin, but when we came to Jesus Christ, he gave us life. He gave us life. Before, we were separated from God, but now when we are born again, he reconciled us to himself. In other words, he brought us to become one with God. We can be part of God. Before we were the children of devil, but as soon as we got born again, we became adopted into God's family. So you can see the big difference, the big change that took place. Before a new birth, we were doomed to hell. We are on our way to hell, but as soon as we believed in Jesus Christ, God set us on the road to heaven. Isn't that wonderful to know that? Our status changed, our position changed, our station changed, so that we are on our way to heaven now. It's not like what it used to be before. So, when does this happen? This happens the instant the sinner accepts Jesus Christ. He realizes that he is a sinner and confesses his sins and says, Lord, I, I, I confess my sins, I failed you, but I believe that you died on the cross for me. Come, I accept you as my savior. The moment you accept him, the moment you trust him, you receive salvation, you are saved, and your status is changed from a sinner to the saint. 
right from a sinner to saint this is what happens the moment you believe in Jesus Christ you are born again you receive a fair, fresh start in life and i want us to know that new birth gives us a new start in life it changes things for us everything changes and we call this wonderful in the sight of god wonderful gift of justification wonderful gift of the love of jesus christ we find this happens when we accept jesus christ as our savior <coughs> from from being a sinner to a saint and this happens all instantly there is no waiting period you just the moment you accept jesus christ as your savior you position is changed from a sinner to a saint now this is a great privilege that is given to us bible mentions that we are uh, we have an inheritance the moment you became the son of god you received an inheritance that's what we read in that scripture what it says there it so talks about uh, partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light light in whom we have redemption through the blood uh, even forgiveness of sins so the moment we have our sins forgiven we become children of god we have the uh, right for the inheritance we are born again we get fresh start because we are now in god's family we are heirs of god's and joint heirs with jesus christ everything that god has becomes ours we have a right to it we claim it because we become saints we become part of god so what are some of the things that we can claim for we read this in titus 3 7 that we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life the moment you believe that you become uh, you you are entitled to inherit eternal life so new birth gives us eternal life not eternal death in the hell but eternal life that is one of the things that he gives to us we have salvation the moment we accept jesus christ it becomes ours we can claim it we it, it's part of us um and then the promises of abraham that was given to him that becomes part of us because we uh received new birth and all the glory all the wonderful everything that god had is ours because of god's grace and goodness and love for us so this is a wonderful change in our life we become heirs to eternal salvation the eternal inheritance of god we claim it we say yes that's mine too because we have become children of god there are so many things that happens that are there for us as we think about it uh, our position when it is changed we see that one of the most important thing is that we find that god is love this we did not know before before we were under the powers of darkness devil was ruling us we did not know but when it was told to us <coughs> about new birth we find that god is love for god so loved the world it's a wonderful fact that comes to us and uh, it's something that we inherit we, we we take it because of what god has done for us we find that jesus died for us we were sinners we were of the devil we had uh, no inheritance we had no right to the kingdom of god but because jesus died we have that right now he died for us and then the holy spirit directs us holy spirit convicts us of sin convicts us that this is the way when you hear the message of jesus christ there is an inner voice that tells us yes this is okay follow this path so what is happening god has saved us by his grace what do we mean by that it means simply this that we didn't deserve it we don't deserve anything nothing at all we cannot do anything to get in uh, eternal life everything that we have comes from jesus christ what he did you cannot do it by your works you cannot by good deeds you cannot do it by giving a lot of money or this thing or that thing trying to earn this gift of god it's it's given to you as a gift it's given to you because jesus died on the cross and jesus died on the cross because god loved us he loved us he sent jesus christ because he loved men his his desire is 
that every single soul might be saved. And that's why he sent Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is there to convict us of sin and to draw us closer to Jesus Christ. These are some of the good things that God has given to us and we can enjoy it. And these things don't come because of anything that I have done. My works, my good deeds, nothing of that sort. It's all because of God's love and his grace. Now grace simply means unmerited favor as the theologians say, which simply means that you get what you don't deserve. What should not have given to you, you are not entitled to it, you are not worthy for it, but still it's given to you. See, we were sinners. We were enemies of God. We were far away from God. We were not doing the things that we, we should have been doing. We were dead in sin. We were separated by, uh, from God because of sin. We were the children of the devil. We had nothing to do with God. We were doing everything that was against uh, God. But still, we find that God loved us and sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. That is grace. We don't deserve it, but it's still given to us. And all we have to do is ask for it and say, yes, Lord, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I'm a sinner. Forgive my sins. And so we, we inherit that. That is part of it. And so we find that our station, our status is dramatically changed because of the new birth. Everything that we own, everything that we have, whatever it is, our life itself, our health, <clears throat> our things that we have accumulated all the time on this, all of this is because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we wouldn't be here today. Because with our own power, with our own ability, we would not be able to end it. I'm saved today. I know that I'm saved today. How? Because, not because I have earned it, not because I've worked for it, not because I have, uh, as I said, given, given gifts and donations or all that. It's not because I purchased it with money, but because God loved me and saved me by his grace. God loved me and saved me by his grace. I didn't deserve it, but God's love Sent Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross. The moment I accepted Jesus, I was saved and my status changed from a sinner to a saint. So here, this is what we are doing. We are trying to look at the difference between the two status, before and after new birth. <coughs> we know that lost person... When I say lost person, I mean those who are not Christians, those who are um, out in the world, who don't follow the biblical principles and the method that is laid down there. So that is the lost state. You are under the power of darkness, I said, under the rulership of the devil. He guides you. I think I mentioned a few weeks ago when I ministered that this world is controlled by the evil one. We are controlled by the Holy Spirit and by the Lord Jesus Christ. The people in the world are controlled by the evil one. That's why they do everything what they are doing, which is completely contrary to the scriptures. Things that are in the scriptures, that, uh, the good things, the evil one takes it, twists it, and makes the people in the world think that this is the right way to do it that way. So we find that that is what is happening in the world there. The, the lost person is not controlled by himself. He cannot control himself. He cannot control his own destiny. They are controlled by the evil one. Satan, at his own whim, tries to control the people who are outside of Jesus Christ. So we find that because of this, they are all trapped in a bondage. Their lives are completely worthless. Sin and evil deeds are mark of their lives, daily living, because they are in bondage of the evil one, Satan. Satan sort of uh, uses them like puppets, you know, you make them do things that they don't want to do. And that is what is happening to the people today because they are 
bound by the devil. So what happens when we come to Jesus Christ? When you come to Jesus Christ and accept him as your personal savior, things change in your life. And it, it's not little by little. It's not by little by little because, you know, maybe in your life before you came to Christ, there were some things in your life and you felt, no, this is not good and I will leave it. And, uh, you know, some people have the habit of smoking cigarettes. You talk to them, yes, I'm leaving it little by little. You know, I'll stop by now and then and then and then maybe on my birthday I'll completely finish it. I won't do it. And they, they make all that kind of thing. They try to do it little by little. But you see, the salvation that comes, the change that comes when we believe in Jesus Christ is instant. At that very moment, the moment you accept Jesus Christ as a Savior, the moment you come and say, Lord, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I recognize that Jesus Christ is your son. He came to this earth to die for my sin on the cross. The moment you say that, I believe that he rose again from the dead for my sins, immediately at that moment, instantly, you are changed. You receive the new birth. And this is what happens. Everything <clears throat> from the time of your birth till that point, the day you accepted Jesus Christ, all your sins and everything is completely wiped out. The scripture is referred to is as far as the east is from the west. Or in the deepest of deepest sea, it is cast out. Finished. There is no more sin. And that sin will never be brought against you at any time up to that moment. If that sin comes back to you, it's the devil who will remind you. That, oh, you were like this or like that. But the day you got saved, everything is gone. But you see, we still live in this world. We are still human beings. We are living in this world. There are bound to happen things in our life that are not very pleasing. Maybe sinful things. <coughs> some shortcomings. Maybe some wrong things that we have done. Those things will happen. But the Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. Not only past sins, that took care of at the time of your new birth. But in future, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, as you live upon this earth, when you commit sin, it is so very important to come back to him and say, Yes, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I, I misbehaved, I, I committed sin. Please forgive my sin in the name of Jesus, and he forgives your sins. But the work of salvation is instantaneous in the first place. The day you believe in Jesus, you are born again, the old things passed away, you become a new person, new creation. And I think this is something that we must realize and must make it real in our lives too, in our practice. And there is unfortunate that many believers, Christians, they, they don't realize the importance of this. They don't experience this importance. And you find that so many times they are back there doing the things of the world. They get involved in the, in the Hindu religious activities or um, practices, you know, and, and because they say, well, you know, my family is doing that, so I need to do that. Or some other habits that you've had in the past because some friends are doing it, so you continue in that. But I want you to know that if you are a Christian, you are a born-again Christian, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Isn't that what uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says? That... Anyone who is in Christ, he is a new creation. <coughs> old things are passed away. Behold, all the thing has become new. You become a new person. This is the powerful deliverance that God gives to you through new birth. Through this new birth, this is the most powerful deliverance. Nobody else can do this. You will not hear of this anywhere in any other religion. The instantaneous change that takes place in a person's life. We have been made new creatures. We are delivered for always. Once when we are saved, God has saved us. And as long as you believe in him, as long as you follow him, as long as you practice what he tells you to do, you are bound to heaven. And that's what it is, the beautiful thing about it. <coughs> the day you reject him, then you can go back towards devilish things. But we are grateful that God changed our status in life from death, he has given us eternal life. From follower of Satan, bound by Satan, 
now we are bound by Jesus Christ. How wonderful this is. So just quickly going over this, we are in the new kingdom now. Um, before we got saved, we were in the kingdom of the devil. He dictated to us. He told us what to do and we were doing those things. And this is where we have to be very careful, even today as Christians. Recognize the voice of the evil one. Sometimes we don't. And we do think things and, um, <clears throat> that are wrong. <coughs> Recognize the voice of the evil one and make the difference. Who is speaking? Is it the devil in, 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 uh, encouraging you to do something? Or is the Holy Spirit asking you to do something? Remember, we were in the kingdom of the devil. But the day you got born again, you were changed from the kingdom of devil to the kingdom of God. God's kingdom. So you are in a new realm altogether. New kingdom altogether. And this is something spiritual. Spiritually, we are changed from the hands of the devil into the hands of Jesus Christ. <coughs> and as I said, when we come to Jesus Christ, we are saved not by what we have done, but by his grace. But by his grace. Um, it's through his grace we enter into God's kingdom. We don't deserve it. I can't do anything to enter into the kingdom, but God's grace and his love. <coughs> when we come to Jesus, we are saved by his grace and we entered into his kingdom. <coughs> That's a great blessing of God for our lives. And this only thing, this only happens <clears throat> through the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been purchased. At one time, we were under the, uh, under the powers of Satan. You see, originally, we were not meant to be under the kingdom of Satan. Satan was not supposed to have any authority over us because God created us and he wanted to have fellowship with us. He created us pure and holy. Uh, he created us so that he can have communion with us. And you know in the book of Genesis, God came down and talked with them personally. He had relationship with them at that particular time. So we were under, uh, under the, um, the, uh, God's kingdom. God's, uh, God was uh, uh, with us. But you see what happened? Men failed. Men committed sin. Disobeyed God. Disobeyed God's direct command. When they disobeyed God's direct command, they went into slavery, slavery of the devil. They sold themselves to the devil. And so we had to be brought back. We had to be redeemed. And that's what redemption means, is to buy back, to purchase back something that belonged to you, but devil took it, and now Jesus paid the price on the cross. Brought it us back into the family of God by his grace. He brought us back into the family of God by his grace. Not because we deserved it, but because God loved us. And that's why he brought us into his family. Um, as I said, everything that we ever did, every mark that stood against us, has been forever removed and washed away. The day you accepted Jesus Christ, the day you invited Jesus in your life, the day you confessed your sins, everything up to that point was completely washed out, completely washed out. But the work of, work of sanctification continues because we are upon this earth. We are bound to do things that are wrong and we need to keep our eyes upon Jesus and uh, ask him for forgiveness and cleansing as the days go by, as we recognize the bad things, the sinful things that we might do henceforth. But you see, all these things God has given to us, gratis, by his grace. You didn't have to pay for it. And this is so very wonderful. We thank God for this, the inheritance that he's given to us. That we can call God our father. And because we call God our father, we inherit everything that God has. 
he gives it to us because we are his children now and this is a wonderful thing that we inherit that and he becomes what now these are very precious and priceless promises that god has given to us so many promises he has given to us one of the most important thing he, he has done for us is that we inherit what is his we can say lord this is mine because i am your child i am your adopted son and i claim that in the name of jesus <clears throat> so when we know that these things are pre- so precious we ought to make uh, you know to to praise him praise his name exalt him as long as we have this breath as long as we are alive we need to rise up and say thank you lord that's saving me thank you for giving me new birth thank you for adopting me into your family thank you for making me your child we read in john 1:12 that as many as believed in him to them he gave the authority to call god father you and i all call god father we <clears throat> it's not god and son relationship is father and son relationship that that entitles us for many many more blessings so we can praise him and worship him for that but the thing is this that we need to ask this question today has jesus made any difference in your life today think about it has there been any change in your life from the time you say you accepted jesus christ as your savior is there a change is your position been changed do you live a different life now or is it the same as what was before if you have trusted him for your salvation <clears throat> and you have experienced a change in your life your standing has been changed from a sinner to a saint then you need to worship god and i want to know put that question to you to you again has jesus made a difference in your life think about it for a few moments as i come to this conclusion over here of the short address i want to seriously for us to think has there been any change in my life since i believed in jesus christ am i living a different kind of life today or is there things that are same that was before i came to christ unfortunately there are many believers they have not really made a clear cut decision here that my life is different now i cannot associate with the people of the world i cannot associate or practice the things that the unbelievers are doing i cannot doesn't matter who they are i cannot associate with them of what they are doing whether it is um, things that they practice or religious activities or just other activities that the ungodly people are doing that maybe you were doing at one time has that changed in your life has jesus made any difference do you live a different kind of life today think about it as we go to communion today maybe it's a good time to think on these matters the the, the, the scriptures encourages us that at communion time we search ourselves examine yourself see where you are <coughs> has there been a difference in your life if you have really met him if you really allowed jesus to come into li- your life then he should make a difference you should be able to say that i am different today because of what jesus has done in my life since jesus came into my life if there has been no change then maybe your relationship with jesus need to be reestablished if you as you are meditating you are as you are searching your heart and you find that hey my my life hasn't changed i'm still what i used to do before then it's time to make some change in your life and only you can do it and jesus will help you to do it if there are practices if there are things that is interfering with your spiritual growth your relationship with god then you need to bring it before the lord because the bible says if we confess he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins restore us in the place where we should be and this will only happen as you make that decision to come back to him and say yes lord i have failed i missed it and i want to meet jesus again meet the jesus of the bible again and let him come in my life and completely cleanse me make me a saint 
instead of continuing to remain as a sinner. Would you stand with me now, please?